Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I made this animation in Blender. Let's first start off with a cube. Add a subdivision modifier to it with Control-3. Apply this modifier. I then added another subdivision modifier without applying it to keep the geometry simple in edit mode. Let's tab into edit and pull this mesh into shape. Turn on x-ray to select the points hidden behind. I scaled the bottom down on the z-axis with SZ. Turn on proportional editing to smooth out the effect of these commands. You can scroll up or down to change the radius. Then I extruded out the head with E. And then I adjusted the shape by selecting a ring of points with Alt-O. Delete half of the mesh with X and add a mirror modifier. Make sure that the subdivision modifier is below the mirror modifier so that the object is mirrored first before been subdivided. Also turn on clipping so the points in the middle merges together. For the beak, I'm creating another cube, subdividing it, and then deleting half of the mesh in edit mode, then joining it with the body with control J. Now scale it down a little and move it into place. Then I pulled the mesh into shape. Right click to shade smooth in object mode. For the arms and legs, I'm using separate objects, which is a lot easier to control with rigs later, and lead to cleaner outlines with grease pencil. I will get to that later. Starting with the cube and subdividing it, then adding a mirror modifier. In edit mode, move the cube away from the origin and extrude, extrude out the arm. I later applied another subdivision and shaded smooth. For the legs, again starting off with the cube, I subdivided it and tabbed into edit mode. Press Ctrl R to create some loop cuts. Scroll up to increase the increments, then pull it into shape. Apply the modifier. Select a few points at the top and delete them with X. Then select the points on the edge and press Shift Option S to make it rounder and extrude this part out on the Z axis. Then add a mirror modifier and move it out a little bit in edit mode. The couch will again be made with cube. Create a cube, scale it down. Then create another cube. And then create another cube. Press Shift D to duplicate this cube. Then I added some loop cuts for the back with Control R. Select the points on the edge and Control B to bevel to rounded edges. Probably could have done with before the loop cuts, but oh well. Hide the chair for now. Shift A to create an armature. Under Viewport Display, check Show in Front and Axis. Tab into Edit Mode and move it into place with G. Extrude out the bones with E to create the spine. Now select one of the bones and press Shift D to duplicate the bone. Move it to the arm. Now this bone is parented to this one. Then I change the name of the bone, making sure that it ends with L for left. This will be useful for later symmetrizing the bone. Then extrude out another bone and do the same for the legs. 
You can also parent the bones by shift selecting the bone and pressing Ctrl P to parent. Select the bones that need to be copied to the right side and at the top, click Symmetrize under Armature. This way, all the rigs have been copied over. Now apply the modifiers for all the objects with Command A and choose Visual Geometry to Mesh. After that, it's time to parent. Select the mesh and shift select the armature, then press Ctrl P to parent with automatic weights. This can go either way depending on how complicated your mesh is. For mine, the arms need to be adjusted. Just select the rig, then shift select the mesh and go into weight painting. Here, select a rig by holding down Ctrl and then adjust the weight to add or remove weights. Or you can select the rig and tab into edit mode. Select the parts you want to remove weight, and at the side, under the vertex group and press Remove. You can also add weight by hitting Assign. Change the viewport at the top. Let's change the background color first by changing the timeline to the shader editor, and change from Object to World. You can simply adjust the color of the default material. But if you want more control, you can create a light path with Shift A and duplicate the background. Then combine them with a mixed shader. This way you can adjust the background color and the shadow. I later decided against this blue color and went with a white background instead. Sorry for being so indecisive. Now let's add some material to the objects. Create a new material delete the principled BSDF with X, add an emission and a light path, and then adjust the color. Select the other objects and assign this material to them as well. For the legs, copy this material and change the color to yellow. Select the body and tab into edit mode, select the beak with L, and in materials, add a new material. Select the yellow material from the drop-down and click Assign. Also added this material to the chair with the color changed to red. Shift A to create a plane to get the shadow going and copy the color of the background. Create a new material. This time, add a shader to RGB and a color ramp. Set the color ramp to constant. Feel free to add whatever color you want. For this one, I'm just going to use two colors. One for the shadow, the other will be the same as the background. Add a sun and rotate it. By the way, you can increase the cube and cascade size to get a better shadow. Shift A to add an object line art under the grease pencil. Uh, this created a grease pencil object with a line art modifier. This might seem a little weird, but here I'm joining the body to the chair. This way, later when animating, a line will be generated at where the chair intersects the body. Then I also joined the legs to the body. You can adjust the radius and where you want the edges to appear. For example, intersection adds lines to when different part intersects, or switching from contour to silhouette will create outlines only on the outside. Then I added another line art for the arm. Change from collection to object, select the arm object and the layers and material made by default. Later, I also decided to add a noise modifier to this grease pencil object increasing the noise on the strength and thickness of the strokes in this modifier. Feel free to adjust these settings. Moving on to animation. For easier maneuvering, press N to bring up the side panel, and under View, check Lock Camera to View. Now we can start animating the body. Originally, I animated this by moving bones around individually in pose mode, but I feel that it might be easier to use inverse kinematics instead, so I'll be showing you how to do that. 
select the armature and tab into edit mode. Then shift A to create a new armature and move it to the heels. Then create another one and move it to the knees. Rename the bones, making sure they end in R for right. Select the bones and symmetrize them. Now go into pose mode, select this bone and add an inverse kinematic constraint. Select the armature for the targets. Select the IK bone, and then the target bone. Make sure to adjust the chain length depending on how many bones are in the leg. Do the same for the other leg. You may need to adjust the pole angle. If your leg won't bend when you move the IK around, go into edit mode and move the knee slightly forward. Now let's start animating. In pose mode, turn on auto keyframing. This way, whenever a bone is moved, a keyframe is made. Select all the bones and move them down a little to the ground. Move to a different frame. I changed to rotating around the 3D origin at the top. Move the 3D cursor to one of the legs. Rotate the hip bone with R plus Z. Save the location of the foot that doesn't move by just pressing G without moving the bone. For the other leg, move it back a step. Now just repeat this process. This part may need some adjusting for it to look good. For sitting down, just move the bones around into a position that looks natural, play the animation, and adjust the positions in between to make it look better. To make the mesh look a little squashed, you can scale the rigs down on their local axis by pressing S and then double tapping Y for the local Y axis. To make this breathing motion, I will be using Shape Key. I first separated the body from the rest to make it easier to sculpt later by going into Edit Mode, selecting the body, and pressing P to separate Selected. In Data, add two Shape Keys. Select the second one, and this will be the one where I will the deforming the mesh on. Go into Sculpt Mode. With the Grab tool, pull the mesh up. Note you can change radius by pressing F. Now when we change the value here, you can see the motion. This way, we can change the value to 0, key in this frame in the timeline, move to a different frame, change the value to 1, and key in the frame as well. Shift A to create a blank grease pencil object. Change to draw mode. Add a new material and turn on fill. Then make sure that you are set to surface here to draw on the surface of the mesh. Feel free to adjust the offset of the drawings. With the circle tool, start drawing the eyes. By the way, you can also tab into edit mode and move the drawings around like a normal mesh. Then I also added some details to the couch. For this part, I increased the strength to one and turned off use pressure. You can also turn on stabilized stroke under the brush setting.
Now, let's parent the eyes to the mesh. Select the grease pencil and tab into edit mode. Press L to select one of the eyes and press P to separate the selected object. Select the body and tab into edit mode. Make sure to select the basis shape key. Select three points next to the eyes and select the eye in the outliner. Press Ctrl P to parent the eyes. Do the same for the other eye. And now both eyes follow the mesh during animation. On to animating the eyes. Turn on auto keyframing and move to a different time on the timeline. To see the frame before or after, change the viewport and turn on onion skin. Now when you draw something, a new keyframe is created. Moving the grease pencil in edit mode will also create a new keyframe. You might have noticed that when playing the animation, the grease pencil just jumps from keyframe to keyframe with no transition. To make this smoother, make sure you are in between the two keyframes. Then at the top under grease pencil, select interpolate sequence. This generates transition keyframes in between to create more fluid animation. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. See you next time.